All right, back on the uh, 53 Mercury today. Um, it's got a really bad clatter and a miss. So um, if you remember, I took the head off because the engine was uh, seized. Um, I think what's going on is the, the valves in that same cylinder where it was seized are uh, all gummed up and so I have to clean the valves up. So off comes the head, off comes the intake manifold and the new alternator. Um, then I'll pull the valves out. And then, uh, remember as well, what I did is I uh, cleaned up the steering column there. I pulled it all out because the uh, shift arms were just like lock solid down in there. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. They were all gummed up. So, um, at the same time, the reason why I took it apart was because the um, shift collar, um, I guess also the books call it a uh, gear socket, for the uh, on the tree, the three on the tree, um, that actually where the pin goes in, it broke off. So I have that at a machine shop, and he's going to try and fix it for me because the uh, the availability of the part for a new one um, is non. So I have to get a used one or have mine fixed. So I'm going to try mine fixed first. Um, anyway, that's where it is. I'll be back with you when I uh, get some of the parts off. I think. I hope. We'll see. Okay, so it's been a couple of few minutes. Um, I got the uh, intake manifold off and the alternator and the oil um, filter set up. So I haven't taken the head off yet. Let me pull this out. We'll look down inside if you can see. It actually looks pretty good in there. It's got adjustables, which is crazy cool. Got adjustable uh, lifters in it which is a bonus, which I was hoping it had. Um, you can this camera thing with the crap. You can see in there or not, but I'm assuming it's these here that are the problem, but they're fairly tight. I don't know. So, oh, look at that. The spider was alive inside the spider web, an old one. So anyway, so I'll check them all out. There's the little keeper things you pull out, pull that keeper out, and the whole valve and whatnot comes out. If you can see that what I was pointing at, but the whole valve and uh, kit and caboodle comes right out, out the top of the uh, block, which is kind of cool. I was really expecting to see a lot, lot worse, but it's not a lot, lot worse. So. Alright, now I'm going to pull this head off because this is the one I had off before and this is the side that was uh, frozen. In fact, this, this valve was the one I was worried about most. The valve actually spins. You can spin the whole assembly in there. Any hoodle. So far so good, I guess. I don't know. Get back with you in a few minutes when I get the head off. Okay. I can do this just by holding it. But uh, you see, actually they... Look like they seal pretty decent. They're not bad there, but this is definitely wet. Like it's not not running real good. I think it's because the rings are junk on that cylinder. But as you can see, this valve here, it's actually, it looks like maybe original valve. because It's got the Ford on it where the, the intake is smooth. Maybe all the intakes are smooth. I don't know. Anyway, let me uh, do the spinny spin. If I can get you guys to hold still. I don't know if I can or not. But uh, hopefully you can see the valve there. And it goes like that, and it goes like that, and it, oh, it almost closes. And then the intake opens up, so the exhaust valve is hanging open. Actually, the intake is closing all the way, no problem, but the exhaust valve is in bad shape on that one. Boom. Firing stroke. Let's see. Boom. There goes the exhaust valve starting to open up. Just pushing the exhaust valve up. Crooked. Crooked. And this one's wet. And I'm thinking that the ring is in bad shape. I don't know if I can get the pan off of this bad boy in the car. Worth a crap. I might just have to have a little leak. <laughs> a little smoky smoke. Keeps it lubed up better. I don't change the oil as often because you're just adding. Anyway, that one doesn't look too... Severe number six doesn't. Number five has definitely got a bent exhaust. 
Definitely. So I'm going to pull this one out for sure. Now I worry about the other side. Yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I'm going to check the rest of the side, see what they look like, and then uh, I'll probably just pull that other head off because, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. All right, but you can see that cylinder there at number six, how where that rust was. You can see that's where the piston was, right about there. <laughs> Looks pretty, pretty bad. So, <laughs> the hone job marked, uh, got rid of the rust, but didn't get rid of the, <laughs> the divot. <laughs> anyway, that's about it on this one. Check back on a few. Bada bow, bada bing. Okay, so I got the uh, exhaust valve out. So you can see it's not uh, not seating all the way around because uh, anyway, I'll show you in a minute. The rest of them look pretty good on the side. Um, come over here. Here's the valve, and if you can tell or not, but wobbly, wobbly. That's what's going on. Uh, got the leaning tower of Pisa going on. So the valve is bent. And this is how the thing's kept in there. You got the spring. You have a, a retainer that goes right there, but I decided to store mine in the exhaust manifold. So that'll have to come off to get that. Um, anyway, once the spring's all compressed and the valve, er, the valve is down over it. <laughs> the piece goes on there and then the keepers go on. And then this actually goes into that groove right there and holds the whole kit and caboodle in. So. When you have this, I won't put all the parts in there, but when you have it, then you're, you can have it all pre-assembled on the bench, basically, and then you just slide the whole shebang, it just slides right in, then you put that clip on that, and it, bada bow, bada bing, it's in there. Actually, it's fairly easy, you know, yeah, fairly easy, not, well, maybe so, I don't know, depending on who you are, so... Anyway, need a valve. That's coming. Doesn't look too bad inside there, though. 